to turn with me now to the Word of God, and that's where we're turning to, and we're turning to Mark's Gospel, chapter 10 tonight, the Gospel of Mark, and we're in chapter 10. Now, when you find Mark chapter 10, come with me, please, down to verse number 17, the Gospel of Mark, and we're in chapter 10, and commencing to read at verse 17. Now, Mark chapter 10, verse 17. And when he, the Lord Jesus, was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come. Take up the cross and follow me. And he was sad at that saying and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked round about and saith unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God. And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answereth again and saith unto them, Children, how hard it is for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? And Jesus, looking upon them, saith, With men it is impossible but not with God, for with God all things are possible. Amen. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing to the reading of His own precious truth tonight. The devil, friends. Yes, the devil has many means and many methods in stopping people tonight from coming to Christ. The devil tonight has many means and methods in preventing people from getting to heaven. And my dear unsaved friend tonight, the devil doesn't want to see you coming to Christ. And the devil doesn't want to see you in heaven. And one of the greatest weapons the devil has in stopping people from coming to Christ tonight is confusion. You know, I remember doing a mission a number of years ago. And one of the ladies who was in our outreach team had this to say. She called to a door with an invitation. I'll, know, I'll be nowhere near your mission because I'm at the stage I don't know who to believe and I don't know what to believe. And there's many people like that in the north of Ireland this evening. They don't know who to believe. They don't know what to believe. And one of the greatest 
things tonight that has brought confusion to the hearts and to the souls and to the minds of the unsaved is the art of religion. Do you know something tonight? Nothing confuses people more than religion. Nothing hinders people more from coming to Christ than religion. Nothing stops people from getting to heaven more. I'll tell you now, there's more on the road to hell because of religion than there is drink. There's more on the road to hell tonight, more so over religion than there is drugs. I'm telling you tonight, the devil is driving people to hell wielding the stick of religion. And religion tonight is one of the greatest methods and one of the greatest weapons that's in the hand of the devil that's stopping people from getting saved. Nothing has brought more confusion to people tonight than religion. How many people, if I had a pound in my pocket for every time I have heard this one, do you realize, sir, that when I was baptized, the clergyman told me that I was made a member of Christ, a child of God, and an inheritor of the kingdom of heaven. Surely a clergyman knows what he's talking about. Well, there was a day when I was held in a, a minister's arms. There was a day when I got a wee drop of water on my forehead. And that man told me that he made me a member of Christ and he made me, a child of God, and an inheritor of the kingdom of heaven. And many people hangs on to those words tonight. They're hanging on to those words that they're going to heaven because that's what one man said. Well, I'll tell you, that's not what Jesus says. You know, here this evening, friends, you better count on this. Nothing confuses more than religion. I was talking to a lady this afternoon. Do you know what she says to me? That, her, that a minister, a minister, says that when you die, you have another chance. I'll tell you now, friends, now you listen, I say with us all the love in my heart, there's more lies told from pulpits than there is from anything else. The devil has his men in pulpits, no matter where anywhere else. But here tonight in Mark's Gospel, chapter 10, we have a young man tonight, and this young man has got religion. Here's a young man tonight who observed the commandments. We read in that story tonight, he observed the commandments from the very youth upwards. And this young man tonight in Mark's Gospel, chapter 10, here's a young man tonight, and here he is tonight, and he's running to the Lord, and he's running to the Lord with his religion. And he's not only a man who has religion tonight, he's a man that has riches. And he comes this evening to the Lord Jesus, and he asks that all-important question, what must I do that I may inherit eternal life? And the Lord Jesus said to him what he had to do. And because of what the Lord Jesus said to him, friends, he went away grieved, not saved. He went away sad. So much so tonight that those who are watching, so much so those who are listening, they started to talk among themselves. Here's a young man. He's kept the commandments. He's done nobody any harm. 
And they all gather together and they all ask this one question. It's the last words of verse 26. And this is my text tonight. Who then can be saved? Here's a young man who kept the commandments to the best of his ability. And yet he goes away sad. And then the question's asked, if he's not saved, well then who can be saved? Who then can be saved tonight? That's our text. Who then can be saved? Really saved? Well, I'll tell you who then can be saved tonight. Those tonight who realize that they are sinners. That's who can be saved tonight. Because they who never see themselves as sinners will never be saved. No, friend, tonight, do you realize you're a sinner? Because I believe that here is a young man. Even though he was religious, even though he was rich tonight, I believe he accepted this point. Because tonight, dear unsaved friend, it'll be impossible for you to be in heaven unless you realize first that you're a sinner. Many people accept the truth tonight that God is love. And thank God tonight that he is love. Many people accept John 3.16 as a wonderful truth. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And everybody accepts that truth and believes that truth. But here's where the problem lies to me with so many people. They don't accept Romans 3.23 where it says, we all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Do you see, if you don't accept Romans 3, 23, you'll never, John 3, 16 will be no use to you. They who don't know their need will never have their need met. But as I look at that young man tonight, there's something on his heart. There's something on his mind. There's something troubling him. So much so that he runs to the blessed Savior. So much so tonight that he falls at his feet. And I believe that this man, young man realized he was a sinner. And you know, friends, this evening he made of religion. He might have been religious, but I'll tell you he was concerned. This young man knew he wasn't right. Even though he kept the commandments from his youth up, maybe the fear of death drove him to Christ. The fear of dying unsaved. This young man perhaps knew something in his mind. I'm not right with God. I have tried keeping the commandments, but I know better. Oh, this young man had no problems realizing he was a sinner. I believe that's why he come running to Christ. But my dear unsaved friend tonight, you can realize tonight you're a sinner and still not be saved. You can realize tonight you're a sinner and still not be saved. If that's the case, George, who then can be saved? You see, the Bible says tonight, all we like sheep have gone astray, we've turned every one to his own way. 
You could believe that tonight. You may accept Romans 3, 23, but that doesn't make, that doesn't say that you're saved tonight. You can realize you're a sinner tonight and still not be saved. That raises the question, who then can be saved? Well, you know, I believe this young man tonight realized he was a sinner. But then who then can be saved? Well, I'll tell you who, who can be saved. Those who recognize Christ as Savior. Did you notice that young fella as he ran? He didn't run to the disciples. He didn't run to their feet. He ran to the feet of the blessed Christ of God because this young man realized Christ was Savior. He ran to his feet and he knelt at his feet and he cried and he said, Good Master, what must I do that I may inherit eternal life? There's many a young man like this tonight, you know. They have religion coming out of their ears. But they know rightly they're not saved. They never miss church, but yet they know they need Christ. Friend, tonight you always come to this gospel meeting and we thank you for coming tonight. You realize you're a sinner. You realize that, that Christ is Savior. But tonight you're still not saved, even though you realize you're a sinner and recognize that Christ is Savior. But you're still not saved. Let me tell you one thing tonight, friends. And make this clear. Even this young man, a young man that he was, Realized he was a sinner, he recognized Christ as Savior, but he had no assurance. He had no peace of heart. He had no peace of mind. He had no peace of soul. And you know, friend, this evening, listen, I want to say something tonight. There's many a man like this man. And you know, friends, this evening, there's a lot of religious people and they know they need Christ but they don't know him. They're not trusting in him or you and they think they can get through life without Christ. They think maybe perhaps, ah, well, their religion as long as we're it. I'll tell you something now. You want to be at the bedside of a dying unsaved person. You want to be at the bedside to learn, I can tell you religion's no good to you when death comes. People think life's good. But a lot of people forget that their dying moment comes. And I have seen a man clutching for this and he's clutching for that and he's clutching for the other thing. because he knew that he was going out. And all that he was trusting in was no use then. What are you going to hold on till tonight when your day and moment comes? And listen, love, it will come. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. And I believe this wee lad knew that. He knew that Jesus was the door. And he knew that by him, if any man enters in, he shall be saved. I believe he knew that. I believe he accepted that. But he still wasn't saved. Ah, you see, friends, tonight there's always the trap that catches the mouse. And even though this young man tonight knew, he realized he was a sinner. Even though he recognized Christ as Savior, as the Savior. 
It wasn't enough, you know. Still wasn't saved. You know what it is tonight? You realize you're a sinner? Well, the Lord bless you if you do. I believe this young man come to Christ that day with that burning sensation of conviction of sin. And I believe he knew that the one that he ran to was the Savior of the world. But even though he knelt at the feet of Christ, and even though he cried, what must I do to, in to inherit eternal life? I'll tell you, he wasn't saved. He wasn't saved. Here's a young man tonight, he was so close. But yet so far. So close. He was that close. But yet so far. You're saying to me, George, tonight, if that young man realized he was a sinner and still wasn't saved and recognized Christ as Savior and still wasn't saved, here's the question then. Who then can be saved? Well, here's the answer. It's one thing to realize that you're a sinner tonight. And it's one thing to recognize Christ as Savior. But there needs to be repentance of sin. You can realize all you want and recognize all you want. Do you see if there's no repentance, there's no salvation? I always hear men preach, and they're right. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But I believe there's a time when that text doesn't work because they see if there's no repentance, there's no salvation. Who the Lord Jesus said twice in Luke 13, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. I believe this wee lad was earnest. He was earnest that he ran. He was earnest when he got down before Christ. He was earnest in his cry. I believe he was earnest in his conviction. I'll tell you, Felix was earnest when he trembled. He wasn't saved. Because Felix was like this young lad. He refused to repent. You see, that's the trap that catches man. It's one thing to realize, dear unsaved friend, you're a sinner, I. It's one thing to recognize Christ is the Savior. You need to repent of sin and receive Christ as your Savior. That's the step. When the Lord Jesus told this young man what he had to do to have his request fulfilled, he went away sorrowful. Why? Because that young man valued his soul less than what he owed. What this young man had outweighed what he needed. You know, friend, tonight, he wouldn't let go of his possessions. And you know what the Lord Jesus said, don't you? What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world? Lose his own soul. Danny Hill. Was found sitting in the chair. 
dead. The last six years of his life, Benny Hill died a seven times over millionaire, didn't he? In the last six years of his life, Benny Hill wouldn't buy himself a new suit or new clothes. He just patched up all that he had. Why? Because he thought it a waste of money to buy new clothes. Danny Hill could drive but never owned a car. He thought owning a car wasted money. Danny Hill, if he could walk the distance, never purchased a taxi. Why did he not take a taxi for? Because he wouldn't spend the money. He thought it was a waste of money. Danny Hill, the comedian, seven times over a millionaire. A millionaire seven times over. And you see the day they found him. They found him sitting in the chair, dead. You know what he was doing when he died? Counting his money. This young man tonight held on to his possession, turned Christ down. He was almost persuaded, almost persuaded, until the choice of repentance came up, and he felt his possessions was more value than his soul. You know the tragedy of this story here? This young man who was at the feet of Christ was never found at the feet of Christ again. So close, yet so far. That's how close you can be and miss it. Be wise to me. Your trouble. Don't you leave it one hour longer, never mean one night longer. Tonight may be your last call. So let's take the wee moment and bow in prayer. Let's bow this, these moments. You realize tonight how close the young man was. Imagine being found at the feet of Christ and still lost in hell. His religion done nothing for him. As far as his riches was concerned, he left all behind him. And tonight he's a lost soul and a lost sinner's hell. Many times have you found yourself at the feet of Christ under conviction, but you've done nothing about it. I pray tonight if you're troubled, you'll come tonight and repent. Don't miss it. Lord to Jesus tonight, we leave the eternal issues of this meeting to thee. Give deciding grace, we pray, for thy name's sake. Amen. And amen. Our closing hymn.